think what's cool about the wildlife in Denali is that they have this vast uninterrupted ecosystem that starts up in the glaciers and goes all the way down to these low-lying areas. Just this very broad array of wildlife have a whole entire world that is capable of sustaining them. And it's protected forever. So what a cool thing <laughs> that we get to walk around in the middle of it and witness that. I absolutely love foxes. Ptarmigan have a lot of personality. It's completely raw and unfiltered, and the wildlife is such a huge part of that. Seeing a wild animal in the backcountry can be an incredible experience, but knowing how to behave in an encounter scenario might make all the difference. This is bear scat. It's a little bit old. We know it's bear scat because it's big. Um, and you can tell what they've been eating. Denali is home to hundreds of black bears and grizzly bears. Bears are omnivores. They eat anything from roots and berries to caribou and moose. I really like bears because they're so, they're so individual. There's intent. Like you can tell that, that they're thinking about things. When we go out on any hike in Denali, we remember the two basic rules. Stay alert huh? and keep your distance. Do you see the little white specks? Always keep at least 300 yards or three football fields between you and any bear. What I do when I'm traveling in the backcountry is always go through what's the worst thing that could happen right now and how would I react to it. Scenario number one, what if, as we're hiking, we spot a bear out in the distance. As soon as I see a bear, I'm thinking, all right, how do I need to change my route? It looks like it's in a cheeky place. If the bear is still far away and hasn't noticed us yet, we simply avoid it. We take a different path that gives the bear plenty of space, keeping an eye out to make sure the bear doesn't move into our new route. If the bear is still far away, but has noticed us, we would wave our arms over our heads and back away slowly, making it clear that we are retreating. So we're going to make ourselves look as big as possible, staying pretty close together, and we're going to speak in a low, calm voice to let the bear know that we're not threatening. At this point, we don't yell or shout to draw attention to ourselves. Their number one sense is their sense of smell. And so that's usually how they know that you're coming. You know, they can smell you from a mile away. So this is a really, really windy park. And so if you're on the other side of the wind, you can very easily sneak up on bears. So making a lot of noise, letting bears know that we're coming is number one. Hey, old bear. Yes. Hello, bear. Scenario number two, encountering a bear at close range. Bears, especially grizzlies, are so complex. They're going to base their reaction on each individual situation. I look down, and maybe a hundred feet away from us is the sow and her two yearlings looking up at us. The first thing we remind ourselves is to never drop our packs and never run. Running might trigger a predatory instinct causing the bear to chase after us. Staying calm is really important. We wave our arms above our head and speak in a loud voice to identify ourselves as human. We group together to look bigger. So I'm behind Diana with my trekking poles extended, like trying to look big, and Diana is in front of me with her bear spray out and her hands sort of shaking. We talk to the bear and back away slowly, facing the bear at all times. If the bear follows, we stop and hold our ground. Yeah, bear, go! Yeah! Though bears don't make a habit of attacking humans, they can pose a threat in certain situations. I stepped toward him and turned to look and saw this bear just running as fast as he could away from us. He ran off and then turned around and then squared up to charge us. Scenario number three, if a bear charges. A bear might charge if we've taken it by surprise or it feels threatened and is protecting its food or young. 
The charge is usually designed to intimidate us, not to provoke a fight. The bear had squared up, was gnashing his teeth, and we had to convince him that we were not a threat, but also don't mess with us. If a bear charges, we will not run. We stand our ground, yell loudly, and wave our hands, pulling out our bear spray so that we're ready to use it. Often, the bear will veer off or stop its charge, but if the charge continues and the bear is in range, it's time to use our bear spray. You shouldn't have it buried in your pack because you're going to need it right away. Once you've used it, leave the area immediately because bears and other wildlife are going to be really curious about the smell that this has. Our response in a bear attack partly depends on what type of bear is attacking. So it's important to know the difference between a grizzly bear and a black bear. Grizzly bears have these dished faces. They have these big, huge heads with like a dished in nose. And then they have this big muscular hump and it's because they're digging up roots all the time or digging after ground squirrels. They have long, straight claws and short, rounded ears. Black bears have no shoulder hump. They have a straight snout, taller ears, and short claws. Black bears have a longer snout. They have kind of a Roman nose, and it's hard to use color to discern the two. Black bears tend to live in forested areas of the park, whereas grizzlies live in the open tundra and are often found along gravel bars and streams. The grizzly bears, they're just trying to preserve themselves. So if they see you as a threat, then they're going to try to convince you, like, you don't want to mess with this. Scenario number four, what if the bear is about to strike? If a grizzly bear is about to strike, we drop to the ground and lay flat on our stomachs. Or we can curl into a ball with our packs protecting our spines and our hands protecting the back of our necks. If you curl in a ball and play dead, they're going to mess with you for a little while and then hopefully leave you alone once they realize you're not going to hurt them. But if the bear attack escalates into biting and scratching, that's when we fight back. If a black bear is about to strike, we immediately fight back. For black bears, we do everything we can before an attack to frighten the bear away. With black bears, be really aggressive and throw rocks, yell, let them know that you're this mean, scary thing. Whereas with grizzly bears, it's more of a mind game. You want to appear big enough to not attack, but you also want to look like you are not a threat to them. Right here is one giant bear dig with a bear just going to town, probably digging for ground squirrels. We were cooking and a bear walked basically straight into our camp. Scenario number five, what if a bear approaches us while we are cooking? If a bear comes to our cook site while we're in the process of making food, we quickly reseal our food in a plastic bag, place it in the bear resistant food container and lock it. We grab any pots that don't fit into the bear can and with pot in hand, back away, leaving the locked container for the bear to investigate. My boyfriend woke up in the morning to the shadow of a bear on the tent wall and, and he was like, you know, there's a bear right outside. Scenario number six. What if we encounter a bear or a wolf while at our campsite? If a bear or wolf approaches the campsite, we wave our arms and speak in a loud voice, and if it's convenient, we shake the tent. If the animal continues to come back or has damaged our gear, we'll have to immediately leave the area. Hey, bear! Come through the brush, bear! You're out there with the animals, and sometimes they do walk right past you. And so those experiences do really get at you in your core. Wolves are hands down my favorite animals in Denali. They, to me, represent what wilderness is. Scenario number seven. What if we encounter a wolf on our trip into the backcountry? Denali is home to several wolf packs and it's a great place to see wolves in the wild. I was way up high on this ridgeline looking down on a gravel bar. I saw a whole pack of wolves hunting and 
That was amazing to see that. If we do see a wolf, we won't run. We'll wave our arms above our heads and talk in a loud voice. We'll group together to make ourselves look bigger. A wolf has never aggressively approached a person in this park, but if it did, then you would want to stand your ground and not run because a wolf is still a predator. So running away can trigger a chase instinct. So moose habitat is generally you know, a place with a lot of vegetation like willows, but we've got some tracks here. Most moose in the park live in forested areas where they can be hard to spot through the trees. Though moose generally keep to themselves, they can become aggressive if approached too closely. The moose's ears were kind of like going back and his back heels started sort of stomping in the ground. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> I, didn't, all just, I just didn't want to be there anymore. Scenario number eight. What if we come across a moose while hiking and it runs at us? In late September, early October, during their breeding season, the male bulls can be especially aggressive. In early spring, mothers protecting their young are prone to attack and should be treated with extreme caution. We should always be at least 25 yards away from a moose. Hey, -o, moose! If we encounter a moose at close range, we run. We dodge behind large trees, cars, or structures to put a barrier between us and the angry animal. If we're caught in the open, we should run in a zigzag pattern, dodging and changing direction often. A moose will chase us to get us out of its space. Once we're far enough away, it should leave us alone. Moose are not predators and don't have a chase instinct. You need to pay attention to how wildlife is reacting to you. If wildlife are changing their behavior because of you, you're too close. They're just going about their lives just like you are, and you need to be aware. You don't want to get too close, but you shouldn't be afraid to go hiking here. 